Hello and welcome to the Today's Homeowner Weekly Podcast. We're here to help you with the challenges we all face as homeowners. I'm Danny Lifford. And I'm Joe Truini. And each week, Danny and I are here on the podcast to answer any and all home improvement questions. And we want to hear from you. Send us your questions or comments at todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. Okay, Danny, let's get started. Today's Homeowner Podcast is brought to you by The Home Depot, how doers get more done. It's not just boughs of holly that are going to deck your halls this holiday season. It's you decking the whole house with outdoor lights and holiday decor from The Home Depot. Fill your yard with Yuletide treasure like a hand-painted LED reindeer sculpture. Want to build a snowman? You can, with our six-foot sparkling snowman covered in lights. You can even pair it with a Disney inflatable spin. You know, from the movie your kids still watch three times a day. Tis the season to make things jolly, and The Home Depot has everything you need to make the holidays yours. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. This week, I have a special co-host, my daughter, Kelsey lipford Wolf, and we're going to look at a number of simple tips to help weatherize your home. Also, should you seal brand new concrete? What are the advantages? We'll cover that as well. And hairline cracks in concrete, almost inevitable, but there are a few things you can do to hide them and prevent them from getting any worse. Also, while we have Chelsea, we're going to talk about a special project that she's featuring on CheckingInWithChelsea.com. Also, tips on painting kitchen cabinets. you got to prep them right, and we'll talk about what happens if you don't. All that and a whole lot more. So let's get started. You know, one of the things there that we think about, and actually I was up early this morning doing a live segment for the Weather Channel, and from time to time we join the Weather Channel. I've been doing that for over 20 years with them. And uh, to talk just about some very simple things that you can do around your home just to kind of weatherize a little bit. And uh, Chelsea, this is something that I know with your home, the Chelsea Ranch Revival that we've been working on. You've been kind of tightening up things a little bit because you're talking about a home that's 60 something years old. Uh, you've already changed windows out, which is a big thing to do for energy efficiency. But I understand you used an old thing that a lot of people don't know about that you installed recently the socket sealers. I think you really are a big believer in these. Oh, yeah. I was changing out some outlets from the, you know, yellowed outlets to some crisp white ones. And there's this big void around the outlet on your exterior walls where air can get into your house. Well, you're paying good money to heat and cool your house. So we need to seal that off. And all it is is a really thin little piece of foam that already has the two holes cut out for your plugs. You pop it in there, pop the cover on, and now your home is sealed up for winter and summer. Now, this is a a good example of just like many different uh, little steps that you can make to seal the envelope of your home and really make it more comfortable. And, oh, yeah, by the way, you save a little money on your energy bill. And it doesn't seem like an outlet that's positioned on the inside room that's on the outside wall that any air would get in there. But when you're talking about older homes, you're talking about even brick homes and so forth, it's amazing how much cool air can blow through that, especially on the north side of your home when it really starts getting cold. So that's a great way to go. They're called socket sealers. They're available at at duckbrand.com and a very easy way for you to seal up um, that part of it. Another thing that you need to look at closely is maybe tonight when it gets nice and dark, get a bright flashlight and maybe get one of your children to help you out on this and have them on the outside and then shine that light all the way around the perimeter of the door, including right at the bottom of it. And if you see any light at all that you know that that you can see through that crack then that means air is getting in there something needs to be done you might need to adjust the door that helps a lot of times where it may have to be sagging a little bit or can you know they get a lot of wear and tear if that's not it then look at the weather stripping it may be damaged or out of place and then by all means get down on the ground and look under that door to see if you have a gap there and if you have a gap there installing a simple door sweep on the inside of the door is all you really need to do in order to take care of that. Chelsea, another thing, um, prior to changing your windows out, you had the classic example of an obsolete, um, non-energy efficient window (laughs) with those metal single pane windows. You're a big believer in the window insulator kits as well, right? Yeah, they they, um, also, we call them roll-on kits. And I used those in our last house and really saw the benefits of them. Um, I did it during the summer, so all that heat 
coming in, you wanted to keep it out, and you you put it on the inside of your house um, on your like window trim, and it cr- creates a essentially what is a double pane window, right? Right, right. You just create that air gap between it, and that's what's really um, providing the insulation from the cold air coming in. You could feel the difference between a window that had a roll-on kit and a window that didn't. So I can imagine during the winter being able to keep that cold air outside of your house, you're going to save so much more money than um, it costs you to buy those window kits. Now, let me tell you how simplistic a window kit is. First of all, um, it contains a sheet of almost clear plastic, very thin plastic. Then you have double stick tape that's also clear. So all you're doing is you're going inside, not on the window, but on the window frame. Whether you have drywall returns or whether you have wood around that window opening, you basically clean that window to make sure you get any kind of dust off of it. Then you apply the double stick tape right on the edge of the trim. Then you put the piece of plastic over it and trim any excess around it. Then what's the magic part then, Chelsea? One of my all-time favorite home improvement tricks is you use a hair dryer to shrink wrap your window. Mm -hmm. You have all these wrinkles on the plastic after you apply it, and you just slowly work your way back and forth with the hair dryer. The wrinkles disappear, the plastic tightens up, and you get that nice sealed-off air pocket that creates an insulated window. You know, always think about things that you can, you know, get your kids to help you out with some of these projects and make it fun. Hey, let me tell you, you put that on and it's got all these wrinkles. It's got, you know, got a little bit of wrinkles on it because it's been folded up in the box. And you give them, you know, the magic wand, the magic air air wand, and let them completely eliminate all of those wrinkles. I'm telling you, it's a lot of fun. They'll want to do another one and another one and another one. uh, And then they get bored and they want to eat candy. But it's it works really, really well. I mean, don't we all? (laughs) <laughs> I just wish a hair dryer would work on the wrinkles on my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, that might be the opposite on that. But. <laughs> hey, you know, one of the most neglected areas of the home when you're thinking about, you know, making it energy efficient, especially during the winter, is actually inside the home. The disappearing stairway that you have that goes up to your attic, or even if it's a scuttle door, you think about it. The rest of your house, you have drywall or plaster. Then you have a blanket of insulation in your attic to prevent the heat from rising and escaping. Then you have a quarter inch piece of plywood with nothing at all on it that doesn't fit very well. So how can you make that more efficient? And the disappearing stairway covers, you know, they really look like, you know, the little pop-up tents that you can put together. It looks just like a miniature tent like that. And, um, but, but I know that you've installed a lot of those. You have one at your house. I have one here and we have one at the office. Um, You know, how simple is that? But it's probably the best example of something that just nobody thinks about. Yeah. I mean, I always call it an attic tent because it looks exactly like a tent. You put the four or I guess it's just the two metal posts in it Uh to create Mm -hmm. the tent shape. And then you stick it up in your attic over your stairwell cover. And I'm telling you, you open up the stairs. It feels like you're inside your house. You remove that cover and you just are blasted with the cold air or the hot air, depending on the time of year. You can really tell the difference and feel that insulated blanket working over your attic stairwell. Yeah, I mean, it it really does show you that it works very well. And the simplicity of it is just great. Now, all of the things we've talked about so far, you know, one of them, just one of them will make a difference. But you start putting three or four of these ideas together. Now you're going to see that power bill starting to kind of get a little more modest and also uh, the comfortable part of it. Because, you know, uh, I've heard of people talking about, you know, you sit down for Thanksgiving dinner and you're sitting, you know, in the dining room. Maybe sometimes you don't use the dining room a lot. And then a couple of the people go, hey, I don't want that chair there. It's too cold because it's the one on the outside wall and the window and so forth. So it also, these things will make your home more comfortable and cozy uh, all year long because everything we're talking about is still effective, not only during the winter, but also during the summer. So you're really getting your, your benefit 365 days of the year. We have Bruce on the line right now from Harlan, Iowa. And Bruce, uh, welcome to the show, and uh, congratulations on building this new home. That's uh, got to be exciting for you guys. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, we are in the process of building a new home. And my question is, um, in the basement, we are going to have like a storage area, 
a mechanical room and also a space like underneath the stairs and stuff that will just be basically just stay concrete. Uh And will I have to put a sealer on there or would you recommend doing anything to that or should I just leave it the way it is? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm I'm glad you're asking this question because so many people feel like once a concrete slab is poured and it dries for a day or two, you're done. You never have to do anything with it again. But what you have there is a big, very absorbent sponge, and it's going to just soak in anything that gets anywhere near it. And it may not make a difference. You know, it's just a basement and that kind of thing. But if you really want to be proactive, what you need to do is you have to wait. I don't know why they always say 28 days instead of 29 or 27, but for some reason, uh, a curing time of 28 days before you apply anything to it. But at that point, just clean it up really well. Hopefully there's no stains or anything that's happened along the way. And then it's as simple as getting a clear masonry sealer. Okay. And you can buy that at any paint store, home center, and so forth. And then just use your pump-up sprayer. You don't dilute it or anything. You use it straight out of the can. It's a, it's very liquidy, and uh, just put it in your pump-up sprayer, and then spray one nice even coat over the entire slab. Okay. Now, by the time you get to that end of the slab and finish it, you'll look back over your shoulder and you'll feel like you've done absolutely nothing because it'll 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 soak right in, okay. and it might have just a slightly wet look to it for just a little while. But just look at what they recommend on the can. But most cases, you can turn right around and put a second coat on it at that time, depending on the drying conditions. Like put the second coat on right away. I would read the instructions, but okay. for, the, for the vast majority of the ones that I've used, you're able to put it on right away. Then you may have to wait a couple hours, but I would go ahead while you're doing it and put a third coat on it because you'll never have to do it again. And what this will do, first of all, it'll keep it um, in a much more dust-free type of situation, you know, because um, if concrete is not sealed, it tends to chalk a little bit. Mm-hmm. And also, it'll prevent any kind of stains from penetrating down in it. So if you get a little oil dripping on it, or you get a little of this or a little of that, it will be something that you can wipe off. Now, it's not like varnish that's going to create this hard coat on top. It still soaks into the pores of the concrete, but it just seals it off, and it'll make it um, it'll make it look a lot better for a lot longer and make it a lot easier to keep it clean. Then, later, if you decide to convert that to a legitimate living area, you're ready to go with your floor, and you already have the concrete sealed. So okay. that's really as, as simple as it is, but so smart to think about doing that, Bruce, really a good idea. Okay. I have some sealer. I have a cement pad outside that we use some sealer on. I'm hoping if I read the directions, I can use that same sealer since I have some left. Do you think that will work? Oh yeah, most likely that would work perfectly. Okay. It's um, it's it 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 should um do do the trick very well. How far along are you on the house? We are painting. Oh wow! So we're moving along. Okay, so you're already past that uh, 28 day period, oh, yeah. so you can you can get right to work on that. You know, you also read the instructions about you know the cold weather. You know, if it gets if, it, if that temperature gets down too low, you'll want to hold off on it. But most likely inside the house, it'll be warm enough that you'll be able to proceed on that just about any time. Yep, that's my plan. Okay. Well, Bruce, uh, best of luck to you. And again, congratulations on the new home. Don't worry about all the little loose ends right here at the last. It's uh, <laughs> it's like I've told many, many people over the years. You won't remember how long it takes to get the project done, but you'll remember every day if the project's not done right. So right. Uh, so, 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 best of luck to you on that, and I uh, hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. Okay. Thank you very much. Right now, we're going to head to Virginia. Alan is on the line. Alan, welcome to the show, and tell us what's going on around your house. Hi, Danny, and thank you for taking my call. Certainly. This is the third time that I've uh, come to the mountain for advice, and your producer said two more times, and I get the TSA line, so I appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, well, Danny, we're in the beautiful Virginia mountain mm-hmm. uh, at about 3,600 uh, altitude, and our temperatures range from zero in the winter to 80 in the hottest of summers, so we got a pretty good temperature range. House is about 15 years old on a concrete foundation. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm developing a few little fractures. I've sent you a couple pictures. I don't know if you had a chance to look at those. I got them. You have to take a look at them right now. Sure. But I started with uh, fixing it with concrete, thinking concrete on concrete would be better, but I think with the 
uh, the, the change of temperature, I'm getting a little bit of shift. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if I should start back all over, scrape all that concrete back out, and then maybe uh, hit it with some expandable caulk or something. But I'm, I'm, uh, I'll be excited to hear what, what you recommend. Okay, well, I'll tell you, it is a very common problem, Alan, of course. And uh, when you have that temperature fluctuation like that, you're always going to have that expansion and contraction. And, you know, people think of concrete as it's so permanent. It's, you know, how could it possibly expand and contract? But it's pretty amazing how, how, how you might look at that crack on a 20 degree morning and then look at that crack again on an 80 degree day and uh, it's completely different but you know the challenge is the coloration of it I'm sure when you put the concrete patch that you put on it it, the coloring probably didn't match exactly and that's uh, the biggest challenge but the very best thing I've ever seen is uh, to use a concrete repair caulk that actually has a little bit of texture in it. This is something that Quickrete developed a few years ago. And the secret to it all is clean that crack out well. So maybe take just an old screwdriver and just scrape it a little bit. Then take your leaf blower and blow all the dust out of there. Then use the concrete repair caulk very sparingly. And you just, you don't want it to overlap. You just want it to fill the actual crack and then scrape off all of the excess of it. And so that will take away the, 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 you know, the, the black line, more or less, that you have with cracks like that. It, it'll prevent any moisture from getting down in there that can cause even more problems. And it blends in about as well. I'm not going to say you won't see it. But it blends in about as uh, about as well as anything that I've ever seen, and and one tube will go a long way with these small hairline cracks that you have. But I think that's probably the best way to approach it. Danny, is this the same type of material that you use to fix like a, a garage floor? Because that's what I use, or is this something totally different? Well, um, this, this is a, I, I don't know if, um, I, I think it's a polyurethane base uh, so that it makes it extremely flexible and, and it won't dry out very well. So I'm not sure if it is the exact same, but uh, it is one that, um, you know, just about any home center would have. And it, it's, you know, spells it out as concrete repair caulk. So it's um, not, not sure um, if it's exact same, but it, that's, that's about the best thing I've ever seen to, uh, to, for this kind of situation. And to try to get, you know, do I really try to kind of maybe growl, kind of uh, very aggressively try to open up the line a little bit to, to make the line bigger for it to hold on to or just just kind of scrape it down to the level yeah, and then it, just repair yeah. it? It's mostly just trying to give a little bit of room for it to get down in there. I wouldn't be too aggressive. As a matter of fact, I would use it probably an old putty knife instead of a screwdriver would probably, you know, that thin blade of that putty knife will probably get down into that crack just a little bit more. You don't have to be too aggressive with it. Just give a little bit of room for that caulk to get in there and do its job. I appreciate the information, and thanks for all your help, and uh, thanks for allowing me to come to the mountain. Hey, we appreciate it anytime. Come on up and uh, and visit with us anytime, <laughs> Alan, and, uh, and uh, you sound like you have a beautiful place there, and keep doing what you're doing, and we're always here for you. You call as many times as you like. Take care, buddy. Be well. All right, you as well. Thank you. Have a great Thanksgiving time for our best new product segment brought to you by a Home Depot. How doers get more done. You know, it seems like everyone is multitasking these days and so are the appliances you have in your home. The HomeWorks Smart Vent bath fan does what you would expect it to do. It vents all the humidity out of your bathroom, but it also includes an LED light. No big surprise there, but this light is dimmable and the color can be adjusted to four different color temperatures from warm white to daylight. Now, for the fun stuff. This fan also includes Bluetooth speakers, so you can listen to your favorite music while the fan quietly takes away all of the humidity. And to take it another step further, this device is also equipped with Alexa voice-enabled assistant inside the unit, so you can change the soundtrack to your shower without even leaving the shower. Now, for more information on this HomeWorks bathroom exhaust fan with Alexa voice assistance, go to Home Depot. Dot com. Let's check in with Chelsea. Chelsea Lifford Wolf is co hosting this week, but she also has been very, very busy with her great website and blog, checking in with Chelsea.com. So, what is this about grandparent Christmas gift? Yeah, so I, I'm a sucker for anything with my kids' handprints. And so I came up with this idea um, to work with Woodcraft um, to create um, a handprint plaque 
to share, to give to grandparents for Christmas because sometimes you have <clears throat> people who are a little stubborn to buy gifts for. Wait a minute. Um, you, you, they, you, you know, the people you have trouble buying gifts for, you can give them, um, give them a hand, give them a handprint. Um, and so Woodcraft has these slabs of wood that have the live edge. So it still has the bark on one side of it. And so what I did was I traced the kids' handprints, their hands, and then cut the slab up into the individual little pieces. And then I used good old wood burning tool, Dad. You instilled oh, a love of um, burning love wood and um, traced, retraced the, the hand and burned it into the wood and then sanded it and sealed it so that it doesn't get all dusty and um, stained and then put a picture hanger on the back so now I can wrap it up and gift it to um, my kids' grandparents for Christmas and then uh, oh, I also added the date of course so that they know what year um, mm-hmm. the kids were that size. Oh, wow. And uh, and so the kids helped you out a little bit with the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely a kid-friendly project that you can get the kids involved in creating a DIY homemade gift for the holidays. So if someone wanted to do this, uh, very few tools necessary, I guess. Yes. The o- only like tool tool was a circular saw and then a wood burning tool. I got you. Yeah. Which are, you know, fairly inexpensive. And I'm, I'm sure it's one of those things where once you buy it, you'll, you'll find a ton of uses for um, a wood burning tool. And this one that I used came with four different tips. So depending on what you're burning, um, you can make like some serious art. Mm-hmm. out of a piece of wood and this little wood burning tool. Well, that takes me way back to when I was first started doing a little bit of work on on um you know with wood and I remember saving up my money, my allowance to buy one piece of wood paneling. Oh wow. And um so I had the money up. I kept checking go, went to the little counter at the lumber store to find out how much it was. And I, I wish I could remember. It was probably like three dollars or something. And uh so I remember going up on my bicycle because I wanted it to be a surprise. Aww. And I figured out a way on my bicycle <laughs> to carry a four by eight sheet of ply of uh, uh, paneling. <laughs> now the pan the paneling was really thin now. It was real thin. Yeah. But I, I, I took this rope thing and I hooked under it and I held it with one hand down beside the bike, and I rode, and I probably rode maybe a mile and a half, something like that. Did you have to ride uphill? I had to go uphill, Oof. and then on the way back, it was downhill. So <laughs> it, uh, I, I made it home and hit it, hit it back and uh, made these little plaques. And, you know, there for the world's yeah. greatest mom and the world's greatest dad with that wood burner. I can still smell that wood burning, <laughs> that you know, that wood burner. And then I put um, a little varnish on it and uh, and gave it to my parents. And uh, after, you know, they were been gone, I, I actually found those things. Oh, was kinda, they was saved kinda, them. Yeah, that was kind of oh, that was kind of cool. Sweet. So they were using it for little trivets under some plants so that oh. it wouldn't get the water on the <laughs> hey, No, hey, I'm, kidding. No. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hey, they're using but, it. That's all that counts. <laughs> It's not just boughs of holly that are going to deck your halls this holiday season. It's you decking the whole house with outdoor lights and holiday decor from the Home Depot. Fill your yard with Yuletide treasure like a hand-painted LED reindeer sculpture. Want to build a snowman? You can, with our six-foot sparkling snowman covered in lights. You can even pair it with a Disney inflatable Sven. You know, from the movie your kids still watch three times a day. Tis the season to make things jolly, and the Home Depot has everything you need to make the holidays yours. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. Right now, we want to go right to the Today's Homeowner Hotline and see how we can help this homeowner. Hi, my name is Chandra Reed. I'm calling, asking. I have painted our, I think they were like pine-type cabinets, and now the the paint, when you wipe it off, there's pieces of it that have come off, so you have holes in the paint. What can I do to fix that? And if I decide to... Can I take all the paint off? (laughs) Thank you so much. I really enjoy your show, and God loves you, and be safe. Oh, well, we certainly appreciate that, Chandra. Um, Well, I'm afraid we um, may have a problem with that paint just not adhering to the original surface. A lot of times when people are um, painting existing cabinets, uh, first of all, um, wherever it is in the house, but particularly in the kitchen, there's always a, a quite a film over that grease and dirt and uh, just your hands and the oil that comes off your hands and so forth. So 
not only do they have to be really, really clean, they also have to be sanded a little bit. So you kind of have to sand that surface to, you know, eliminate the sheen, um, a little bit of deglossing as a result of that. And that gives it kind of, let's call it a hungry surface so that you can apply the paint. That way, when you apply your primer and your paint, then it really has something that holds it nice and tight. That makes it more durable, washable, and so forth. But if paint is coming off just from cleaning, then it may require you to do um, a fair amount of work there. Um, to completely eliminate all of the paint can also be quite a, um, you know, a labor-intensive task. But you might be able, first of all, you can do a little sanding wherever it comes off and touch it up with the same paint as a way to temporarily maybe get you through the holidays a little bit. But then uh, you're really going to have to do some fairly aggressive sanding. And then you can try something called a bonding primer. It really will help it, you know, kind of erase a lot of the, the mistakes in the past. But a bonding primer has special properties to really adhere to that surface. So a little bit of sanding there and applying that before you put the fresh coat of paint on probably will be all that's necessary. But um, always a challenge in that case, huh, Chelsea? Yeah, and, I, you know, we had all that peeling paint on the back of our house um, on the exterior, mm -hmm. and we used a primer that's called, uh, I believe it's called Peel Stop. And I mm -hmm. wonder if that would work for Chandra's situation um, where it, it kind of fills in the voids where the paint has peeled, and then it's kind of gluey and glues uh -huh. the peeling paint um, back down. I wonder if that would keep her from having to totally remove all the paint and start over. That just makes my stomach turn. That's just... Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, it's, that's, that's way too much work. But yeah, probably so, that type of primer that... And it's funny you mentioned the stickiness to it because that throws a lot of people off. It, it, it almost is that very thing. It's not like you could get your hand stuck to it, but it does have a tackiness that is one of the is one of the main properties that allow that paint to stick. So certainly hope that um, that helps you on that challenge and hopefully you don't have to go to too much of an extreme in order to get that paint to stick. But that goes back to everything we always talk about, Chelsea. You can't say it enough on the preparation necessary for a successful paint job. And that's the part that's just as no fun at all. I mean, you you know, when you're when you're putting the paint on there's a sense of gratification. When you're sitting there sanding and deglossing and doing all of that, that's that's the part you want to delegate out. Right. I was just painting some wood trim at our house and just hating it and thinking, you know what? I'd rather do this now than have to come back and fix it after I paint it. Give myself a little pep talk, but you know, I had to. I had to sand it. I put a good um, primer on, and mm -hmm. then you know, once you prime it, you see all the flaws. So then right. I had to go and fill in all the holes with some wood putty and mm -hmm. um, crack all the um, joints. And now I'm ready to put the final coat of paint on. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be very. It's going to be even more gratifying to put that paint on now that I've done the hard work on the front end. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. And an uh, important part about that is drying time. You know, read the instructions on that because a lot of times it'll feel dry. I mean, just because you touch it and paint doesn't come off on your hand or primer doesn't come off on your hand does not mean it's ready for paint to be applied to it. And I'll tell you something that you never want to hear or see, and that is alligatoring. If anybody's ever had that experience with any kind of paint project, that's usually because you've painted over something that's not completely ready to paint over, and that's a toughest situation in a paint job to correct. I don't know if you remember, but one of the first projects you and I did um, at my old house, one of the mm -hmm. first projects I was on camera on mm -hmm. was we intentionally did the alligatoring on a piece of furniture. Okay, you really threw me off on that one because I... You know, you had this idea, and I was going <laughs> along with it, but I could not understand why that you were doing what we were doing there. And uh, even that time that you spread glue. That's, what, that's what we did. That, that yeah. was the same project. Yeah, and then yeah. painted over the glue. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm going to go sit in my truck. But, but that's a perfect example because we spread glue on, and you wait for it to dry but not be dry all the way. And then you mm -hmm. paint your top coat on, your colored paint. And then as the glue finishes drying, it pulled the paint apart and created mm -hmm. like a crackle finish. Yeah. So I mean, it, that it, was very cool like nine years ago, Dad, okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, it was still bizarre, I'll tell you. And, and, I, <laughs> and I, I came across that piece of furniture recently, that little... It's in little, my bedroom and, now. And, and I, I shook my head going, uh, wow. I can't that, believe uh, that. 
Yeah. Now yeah, I need that, to sand it off and start over. It's like everything you're not supposed to do when you paint. Right. That was the intention maybe, of doing Maybe that. we should put it in a museum. Yeah, that might be a you good know, an um, example. Museum. Don't be like but, this table. Right. The Crackle Paint Museum. That's, a, that's always a good one. <laughs> Now it's time for our podcast question of the week. Hey, you can send us your question by going to todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. This came from Kate in Colorado Springs, Colorado. It says, hello, I love you too. Well, thank you for that, Kate. I have a question about a problem that was created after solving another problem. I had a carport built in my driveway to protect my car from the weather, but it resulted in a bigger problem. Now in the winter, the sun drops down in the sky and my carport cast a long shadow over the end of my driveway and sidewalk. This creates a giant ice rink and the danger for people walking on the sidewalk and for me making my way to the car. What can I do to increase safety and prevent this? Well, you definitely want to be careful with that, especially with the cold weather and the icy conditions that are right around the corner for you there in Colorado. Well, one of the things that you need to do that that will help in situations with ice is to produce a texture on the the actual surface of the concrete. Now, there are different type of textured paint, but one of the easiest ways is to put a coat, and you don't have to necessarily paint it a color or stain it. Now, we don't recommend painting concrete ever. Staining concrete allows the stain to penetrate into the pores of the concrete, makes it a little, you know, it'll last a lot longer. But another way you can do it is by simply using a clear masonry sealer. You'll have to apply it with a roller, and what you do is you put playground sand in it. You don't need much, just a few handfuls in a gallon of clear masonry sealer. You have to mix it and keep mixing it throughout the application, and then when you apply this clear sealer on it, it creates just kind of a, just think of a piece of sandpaper. It's just a little bit of texture on that surface so that it'll grip in situations like you're talking about because, again, extremely important for those people walking down the sidewalk as well as yourself going to and from the car. But I think, Kate, you'll see that that's not a hard project at all. It is something you can find more information on our website at todayshomeowner.com. We do appreciate that email from Kate and would love to get one from you, todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. And thank you again for all those wonderful reviews we get each and every week. I'm Danny Lipford, along with my special co-host, Chelsea Lipford-Wolf. Thanks so much for listening to this Today's Homeowner Podcast.